Hey, welcome to 12 Tone. Have you ever listened to jazz? You know, jazz, one of the primary foundations of 20th century popular music. It's not my favorite style, honestly, but as a theorist, I can't help but respect it. Anyway, a tradition as old as jazz is inevitably gonna have some iconic sounds associated with it, and I think one of the coolest is the walking bass. This is a particular kind of bass line that you can find in all sorts of jazz songs, and it's made appearances in plenty of other styles too. It's smooth, it's clean, and it's deeply evocative of an old school jazz club. Okay, stop. Let's look at how it works first. A walking bass is all about quarter notes. It just keeps plodding along in a regular rhythm, which probably wouldn't be noteworthy, except that jazz tends to have a very peculiar rhythmic feel. In normal music, when we play eighth notes, we just take a quarter note and split it in half. Which makes sense, that's what an eighth is, but jazz has to be different, so they swing. That means that instead of splitting a quarter note in half, they split it into three pieces, then just throw out the middle one. This gives it a bouncy, lopsided rhythm, but the walking bass only plays quarter notes, so you don't actually feel it there. Jazz is also big on syncopation, where notes are played on offbeats to add rhythmic intrigue, but again, the walking bass doesn't care. Instead, it provides a sort of rhythmic grounding so that everything else can be free and weird without being completely impenetrable. So, okay, we've got quarter notes, but there's more to it than just rhythm. We need to know what notes we're playing, which, of course, depends on the chord. Let's use A minor 7. To find our notes, we start by breaking the bar into four parts because each beat serves a slightly different role here. The first note is usually the root of the chord. We're still playing bass after all, we've got to define the harmony before we can really do anything fun. After that, the next most important beat is the third one. Here we still probably want to play a chord tone, but we can be a bit more flexible. Often this is the fifth, but it can be the third or even the seventh if you're feeling adventurous. The point is to fit in with a harmony while still adding a bit of extra color. But those are the easy ones. Beats two and four are where the excitement happens. Beat two's job is to to transition from the first note to the third note, but it doesn't actually have to be a note from the chord. It can be, if beat three is the fifth degree, you can play the third on beat two to get a nice arpeggiating feel, but you can also play any other note as long as it fits the scale. If your chord is in the key you're playing in, this is easy. You can use pretty much any note that's also in the key. If the chord isn't, though, you have to look at chord scales. We've covered these before, but basically these are the collection of notes that work well over that chord in that specific context. Don't worry too much about them, though. They're not crucial right now. What is crucial is that fourth note, because this is what really drives home the iconic jazzy sound of the walking bass. In fact, it's so important that when you've got two chords per bar, so you can only give each chord two notes, this is the one you want to keep. Here we stop caring about what our current chord is and start looking ahead to the next one. We know on beat one of the next bar we're going to be playing the new chord's root, so our job is to set the stage for that note, and we can do that in one of three ways. The first is what's called a diatonic approach. Here we use one of the notes next to it in the key. In this case we're trying to go to a D, so we'd approach it from either a C or an E. This technique lets us smoothly step into the chord, and it's pretty common, but it wouldn't be jazz if we always did the easy thing, which is where the second technique comes in. This is called the chromatic approach, and here we instead use one of the notes that's right next to it, period. That is, we use a note that's either a half step above it, or below it. Sometimes this is in the key, but often it's not, and that's okay. It's a bit more out there, sure, but it helps build a bit of tension that you can then resolve on the next beat. And speaking of resolution, let's look at the last technique, the dominant approach. Here we don't want to be close. Instead we go to the fifth degree of the target chord, which lets us do a big dramatic jump to the new root. This works best when that fifth degree is in the old chord, and especially well if it's the root of that chord, but jazz players love their descending fifths, and they'll stick them in just about anything if you give them the chance. Anyway, with all that in mind, here's that walking bass line again. See if you can hear some of these tricks. Anyway, that's really all you need to know in order to make a pretty solid walking bass line. Serious jazz bassists will often add embellishments, tossing in extra notes to make the rhythm a little more interesting, and they won't always follow the exact note pattern either, but those are a good starting point if you want to go for a walk. See what I did there? Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to help make these videos possible, please consider supporting 12 Tone on Patreon. You can also join our mailing list for scans of all our episodes. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and keep on rocking.